And joining me now is Spanish political analyst Carlos Mascara Villa. Um, Carlos, here we are again, exactly where we were after the last election with the socialists winning most of the seats, but not enough for a majority and inevitably are going to be frantically seeking coalition partners. What do you think is going to happen now? Yeah, hello, good afternoon. Thanks for the invitation, first of all. Well, nobody knows what is going to happen. Uh, however, what it is uh, certainly true is that the situation is pretty similar than what we had already in April. The difference now is that instead of the liberal orange party, who we saw the, the mission uh, this afternoon from, from his leader, uh, we substituted uh, this uh, Ciudadanos party with the far right. So the context is pretty similar to what we had in April uh, and probably even more complicated for Mr. Sanchez because, of course, with the far right, it's difficult that the socialists will reach an agreement, which means that there are only two options or trying to have a big coalition uh, with the conservatives or a parliamentary support in order to get uh, elected president, which would mean a very weak uh, government with external support, uh, because I don't think that the Socialist Party will accept to have conservatives in, in their government, or trying to go to speak with all those small parties uh, that exist, regionalist parties and also separatist parties in, in Catalonia, but also in the Basque Country. So it is still the same situation as we, we had in April, uh, but mm, the socialists need to take a decision or look at the conservatives or look towards uh, pro-separatist parties. That's, there is no other option. But the biggest winner is the Vox Party, the far right party, and they're certainly becoming a f political force to be reckoned with, aren't they? Yeah, indeed. That's one of the main conclusions. I would say the most important conclusion of the elections yesterday is that the far right in Spain uh, reaches this similar numbers to other far right parties in Europe. So we start to see the same process as we see in France or in Finland, or in uh, the Netherlands, or uh, or in other countries. So in this case, we will need to see whether now the strategy would be to try to isolate uh, this party, which would mean that, of course, the conservatives would need to go a bit more into the center to distinguish themselves from the uh, from the far right, because, of course, they are threatened uh, by also the, the increasing votes of this party, which would create certain incentives to support uh, indirectly, not in a government, but parliamentary support for a, a, a government of the socialists and trying to catch back a, a bit the, the, the votes of the center right, to put it in a way. Uh, but of course, uh, we, we don't know whether they want to play this game or as long as they are in a good uh, process of getting more votes, because we have to remember that the Conservatives had 66 MPs in April and now they have 85. So the tendency is growing up. So on the other side, they have also incentives not to facilitate the work of the Socialist uh, Party to reach a government to see whether they can still gain even more votes. So even uh, a third election process, uh, it's not uh, completely out of the table. Carlos uh, Mascarella Villa, thank you.